American Art Journal, New York, January 26, 1895. Our Prayer in Stone. Such is the excellent name given to a new Boston church. Few people outside its own circles realize how extensive is the belief in Christian science. There are several sects of mental healers, but this new edifice on Back Bay, just off Huntington Avenue, not far from the big mechanics building and the proposed site of the new music hall, belongs to the followers of Reverend Mary Baker Glover Eddy, a lady born of an old New Hampshire family who, after many vicissitudes, found herself in Lynn, Massachusetts, healed by the power of divine mind, and thereupon devoted herself to imparting this faith to her fellow beings. Coming to Boston about 1880, she began teaching, gathered an association of students, and organized a church. For several years past, she has lived in Concord, New Hampshire, near her birthplace, owning a beautiful estate called Pleasant View. But thousands of believers throughout this country have joined the Mother Church in Boston and have now erected this edifice at a cost of over $200,000, every bill being paid. Its appearance is shown in the pictures we are permitted to publish. In the belfry is a set of tubular chimes. Inside is a basement room, capable of division into seven excellent classrooms by the use of movable partitions. The main auditorium has wide galleries and will seat over a thousand in its exceedingly comfortable pews. Scarcely any woodwork is to be found. The floors are all mosaic, the steps marble, and the walls stone. It is rather dark, often too much so for comfortable reading, as all the windows are of colored glass with pictures symbolic of the tenets of the organization. In the ceiling is a beautiful sunburst window. Adjoining the chancel is a pastor's study, but for an indefinite time their prime instructor has ordained that the only pastor shall be the Bible, with her book called Science and Health with Key to the Scriptures. In the tower is a room devoted to her and called Mother's Room, furnished with all conveniences for living should she wish to make it a home by day or night. Therein is a portrait of her in stained glass and an electric light behind an antique lamp kept perpetually burning in her honor. Though she has not yet visited her temple, which was dedicated on New Year's Sunday in a somewhat novel way. There was no special sentence or prayer of consecration, but continuous services were held from nine to four o'clock every hour and a half, so long as there were attendants, and some people heard these exercises four times repeated. The printed program was for some reason not followed, certain hymns and psalms being omitted. There was singing by a choir and congregation. The Pater Noster was repeated in the way peculiar to Christian scientists, the congregation repeating one sentence and the leader responding with its parallel interpretation by Mrs. Eddy. Antiphonal paragraphs were read from the Book of Revelation and her work, respectively. The sermon, prepared by Mrs. Eddy, 
was well adapted for its purpose and read by a professional elocutionist, not an adherent of the order, Mrs. Henrietta Clark Bemis, in a clear, emphatic style. The solo singer, however, was a scientist, Miss Elsie Lincoln, and on the platform sat Joseph Armstrong, formerly of Kansas, and now the business manager of the Publishing Society, with the other members of the Christian Science Board of Directors, Ira O. Knapp, Edward P. Bates, Stephen A. Chase, gentlemen officially connected with the movement. The children of believing families collected the money for the mother's room, and seats were especially set apart for them at the second dedicatory service. Before one service was over and the auditors left by the rear doors, the front vestibule and street, despite the snowstorm, were crowded with others waiting for admission. On the next Sunday, the new order of service went into operation. There was no address of any sort, no notices, no explanation of Bible or their textbook. Judge Hannah, who was a Colorado lawyer before coming into this work, presided, reading in clear, manly, and intelligent tones the quarterly Bible lesson, which happened that day to be on Jesus' miracle of loaves and fishes. Each paragraph he supplemented first with illustrative scripture parallels, as set down for him, and then by passages selected for him from Mrs. Eddy's book. The place was again crowded, many having remained over a week from among the thousands of adherents who had come to Boston for this auspicious occasion from all parts of the country. The organ made by Farrand and Voti in Detroit at a cost of $11,000 is the gift of a wealthy universalist gentleman, but was not ready for the opening. Beautiful suggestions greet you in every part of this unique church, which is practical as well as poetic, and justifies the name given by Mrs. Eddy, which stands at the head of this sketch.